Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to quickly read through the documentation reference sheet. And we're also going to review the Unreal Engine 4 main and Blueprint Actor user interfaces. Put together this documentation reference sheet to try and give you a jumpstart into understanding Unreal Engine and Blueprints. We'll be reviewing a few of the most common components used in Unreal Engine. Static meshes, materials, inputs, blueprints, and also levels. There will be links to the Unreal Engine documentation with a short snippet of that documentation for each topic, and also some more basic descriptions in bold. Let's get started. So we'll start with static meshes. Static meshes are one of the foundational types of renderable geometry in Unreal Engine. In order to use these meshes to populate your worlds, the static mesh actor is used. Static mesh is dragged onto the level from the content browser are automatically converted into static mesh actors. Objects in the world are called static meshes. They are made up of components called faces and vertices, which are really just points in 3D space. Materials. A material is an asset that can be applied to a mesh to control the visual look of the scene. At a high level, it is probably easiest to think of a material as the paint that is applied to an object. But even that can be a little misleading, since a material literally defines the type of surface from which your object appears to be made. You can define its color, how shiny it is, whether you can see through the object, and much more. When designing meshes, you can create material slots and assign them to faces. Then in Unreal Engine, or any other rendering software, you can create materials to then place on those faces. Materials in Unreal Engine can range from flat plastics to megascan super realistic landscapes. Inputs. The player input object is responsible for converting input from the player into data that actors like the player controllers or pawns, can understand and make use of. It is part of an input processing flow that translates hardware input from players into game events and movement with player input mappings and input components. Input is extremely easy to handle in Unreal Engine. If you click settings, located at the top and in the center of your screen, then click on Project Settings. You can find input options that allow you to match action inputs and access inputs. Action inputs are for things like pressing A or spacebar to jump. Access inputs are for things like moving your mouse or analog stick to move around. As you probably noticed, Unreal Engine already knows all of the input types for every kind of controller. Blueprints. The Blueprints Visual Scripting System in Unreal Engine is a complete gameplay scripting system based on the concept of using a node-based interface to create gameplay elements from within Unreal Engine Editor. As with many common scripting languages, it is used to define object-oriented classes or objects in the engine. Game modes. Limitless rule variations are possible depending on the specific game you are developing. Regardless of what those rules are, game modes are designed to define them and implement them. Player controllers. A player controller is the interface between the pawn and the human player controlling him. A player controller essentially represents the human player's will. Struct variables. Blueprint struct variables allow you to store different data types that contain related information together. Save games. Unreal Engine 4 features a saving and loading system that revolves around one or more custom save game classes that you create to meet your game's specific needs, including all of the information that you need to preserve across multiple, multiple play sessions. Actors. 
An actor is any object that can be placed into a level. Actors are a generic class that support 3D transformations, such as translation, rotation, and scale. Actors can be created, spawned, and destroyed through gameplay code. Spline tools. With the spline point, selecting a spline curve selects the last point on it. Select it in the editor. You can use the standard manipulation tools, move, rotate, and scale, to select and adjust the positions and tangents of the spline curve's points. Sounds really complicated, but it's really just a spined line that allows you to create a type of squiggly line in any form. The widget blueprint user interface. These widget blueprints are used to create interfaces that display game information and interactions to the player. And levels. When playing a video game, Every object that you see or interact with resides in what is known as a level. The Unreal Engine 4 terms a level is made up of a collection of static meshes, volumes, lights, blueprints, and more, all working together to bring the desired experience to the player. Levels in UE4 can range in size from massive terrain-based worlds to very small levels that contain a few actors. To use these links, hold control and click on the link. From there you can click on this here and it will bring you to the page. Now let's review the user interfaces. The main user interface will seem like a lot coming at you at first, but actually gets really simple really quick. The main user interface will contain areas for a content browser, down here, to help you access and organize all of your project files and folders. And a details pane, over here, displaying all of the public information and settings of anything selected in the level, like this. And an outline list provides a list of all of the objects in the level up here. Just like selecting them down in here, you can select them in the outline nice and quickly even if they're not in your view. A toolbar located at the top gives you a quick access to a bunch of tools that we'll be using throughout the project. There will also be a tools library located over here on the left it will give you access to all the default and user-made tools and objects used to make a game world. Finally, there's the viewport. In this viewport, we can fly around and enter their level and all the specific objects and actors within it. You can right click, hold right click, and use W, A, S, and D to move around, Q and E to move down and up, and also use the scroll wheel to change how fast and slow you can go. Now we'll review the actor blueprint interface. To create a blueprint, we'll first start by creating a folder structure to organize it in. Create a folder named Examples, a folder with that named Blueprints, and a folder with that named Actors. It really helps to keep everything organized. From there, we'll right click in the background to create an item. Click Blueprint Class, and then click the Actor from the list of classes. We'll name it A and 
short for actor underscore blueprint. Just double click on that. So the actor blueprint interface is a lot like the main one. It contains a compiler results panel to help you view any warnings and errors detected in your code. A details pane to view all the settings of a selected item. A toolbar, a lot like the one in the main interface. A components list to view your objects in the scene. Into my blueprint list that displays the event graphs, functions, macros, components, and variables of your blueprint. There's also the viewport where you can view both graphs and the scene of your viewable objects within your blueprint. There's your construction script and your event graph. Here's some objects to view in the scene as well. You can click on them and move them around. They all move relevant to their parent within the outline. Now that I've separated the sphere from the cube, as a parent, I can move it around. If you find the default scene route being visible is annoying, you can always add a component, search for scene, click here, name it your route, and make new route by dragging it onto the original. Now if you close that and drag your blueprint onto the scene, everything you created in that blueprint will be ready and loaded to go on your level. And all works relevant to each other. In the next video, we'll look at how to create and prepare your audio visuals project and we'll also look at the simple approach to visualizing audio information. See you next time.